Today I'm going to teach you how to do noble gas configuration. This is really easy and really quick. You already know how to do electron configuration. This is just a shortcut. It's just going to make that long line of letters and numbers that you have to write for electron configuration sometimes a lot shorter, sometimes it might be just a little bit shorter. Here's what I want you to think about. Um, let's say you're trying to tell somebody how to get to your house. You're at school, you've got a friend you've invited over that afternoon, and you say, okay, let me tell you how to get to my house. When you pull out of the school, turn right. Go all the way to the end of the road and turn left at the gas station. Go past the fire department, go past the Ingalls grocery store, you're going to go past a park, and then you're going to turn left beside of the park, and then you're going to go six blocks, and I'm the third house on the left. That's a lot of directions. What if the person you're talking to is already familiar with the area? Maybe you could say, you know where the big park is? And the person says, yeah, I know where that is. Okay, well, from the park, turn left, blah blah blah. Sometimes we give people landmarks because they don't need every single step. They're already familiar with the area. That's all noble gas configuration is. But we're using the noble gases on the periodic table as our landmark. So remember when we're talking about the noble gases we are talking about this group all the way over on the far right. These are the ones, if you've had some lessons on the periodic table, these are the ones that are perfect. Um, so this is our landmark. And basically, when we do noble gas configuration, we're telling the reader, listen, you know where argon is? Okay, from there, go here. You know where neon is? Okay, from neon, go here. So that's all we're doing. We're using that noble gas as a landmark, and we're taking the person from the noble gas to the element that we're going to. Super, super easy. So let's look at the first one. Let's say that we all know that the electron configuration for magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Not really that bad, not a lot to that, but let's say we want to use the shortcut. So what you do is you find magnesium on your periodic table, we're right here, and you go backwards, think about counting backwards, to the noble gas that came right before magnesium. So 12, 11, 10. That noble gas would be neon. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to put neon in brackets. And then we're going to say, okay, you know where neon is? Yeah, I know you know where neon is. From neon, what comes next? We're going to have to drop down to the next row. We're going to 3S one, two, to three S two. So basically you've just picked up from that noble gas, you left, you just said, listen, I know you know how to get to neon. Let me just take you from there. That's all noble gas configuration is. So yeah, you saved a little bit of writing. Let's look at another one. Let's take a look at iron. So we've got our electron configuration for iron, but we want to use the noble gas configuration. So we're going to look at iron on the periodic table and we're going to work backwards, always think backwards, count backwards, to the last noble gas that came before iron. It might be tempting to hop forward, but you never go forward, you always go backwards. So you're going to start counting back from 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. 18 puts us on a noble gas, which is argon. So we're going to put argon in brackets. And then we're going to pick up after argon which is going to be on row four. So we're going to hit 4s2. Now we're not quite there yet. Then we're going to hit 3d6. Remember the d block is always a level behind. That's why I went to three. So yeah, we saved um, some time. You know, we were able to knock all of this out. Now, there may be times in your class when it is not appropriate to use noble gas configuration. You're instructor may want you to write out electron configuration for a very specific reason. Um, I have lots of reasons I want my students to do that, but sometimes this is okay. So let's do one more. Let's take a look at iodine. As you can see, iodine's got a really long electron configuration. I had to kind of squeeze it in here at the end. Now, iodine's right here. It would be so easy just to hop right here 
to this one, but we can't do that. We have to go backwards. So you're going to start at 53. You're going to count backwards, and that's going to bring you all the way here to Krypton. So you're going to put that in brackets, and then we're going to pick up where that left off. So that got us all the way here to 4P6. So we just took care of all that. You're like, hey, you know where Krypton is? Good, let me take you from there. Now we're going to hit 5S2, 4D10, 5P, count over 5 to get to that iodine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there you are. So that was actually a pretty significant savings on your very valuable time. Now, that's how you do it. Easy. I'm going to give you just a few pointers to wrap this video up. So here are a couple quick notes for you. Um, when you're looking at a real rough sketch of the periodic table, um, let's say you're at potassium. This is just a reminder. You count back to the noble gas that came right before it. Remember, noble gases are our landmarks. And I made you a little note there. Noble gases are the landmark. Go backwards from your element to the last noble gas. You're just counting backwards. That's how you do noble gas configuration. Easy. Um, if you have seen the video on electron configuration, orbital notation, and noble gas configuration, in your mind now, you should be able to conjure up the image of pretty much any atom and how many electrons are on each level. If you've had a lesson on quantum numbers, you can also start thinking about what types of patterns those electrons are moving in. It gives you one great big picture of the atom that makes it much easier to understand bonding. I hope this was helpful for you. I'll have some more videos coming out that are going to be building on this one soon. And before you know it, you're going to be writing and naming chemical formulas.